Today I will be talking and sharing with you some tips about traveling to Tanzania. So um, we'll try to cover the travel requirements to go to Tanzania in 2021, 2022. We'll talk about Mount Kilimanjaro, we'll talk about a safari in Tanzania, and we'll also try to talk a little bit about Zanzibar. I have um, a couple of videos that are already out there on my YouTube channel and an article about traveling to, to Tanzania that is already up right now on my website. So I will try to address some of the things that you should keep in mind before you travel to Tanzania. And of course, if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will be addressing them as we go. Hello, hello, everybody. So traveling to, to Tanzania in 2021, 2022, um, Tanzania was one of the countries that kind of opened uh, early on to, to visitors from, from all over the world, even during the pandemic. So we saw a lot of uh, travelers who would still travel to, to, to Tanzania even during the pandemic, uh, but they do have a bunch of rules in place just to make sure that everyone is staying safe. So. Um, if you are traveling to, to Tanzania, let's say towards the end of this year or even next year, um, it doesn't matter if you are vaccinated, you will need to, to provide results of a COVID-19 test when you get to the airport. And uh, usually you will even have to, to present it at the airport before boarding the, the plane. So when I was leaving from um, LA to, to Tanzania, um, I was flying with the KLM and then when, when I got to the airport in LA, we realized that they wanted the results right there. And I got my test done with the, with CVS and because the labs were a little bit backed, um, we didn't have our results when we went to the airport. And that was a, a whole horrible story where I thought that we would be missing the flight. We will not be um, arriving to Tanzania on time to start our climb, which is critical. Usually if you're climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, there is a set date or set schedule if you're climbing the mountain on the 28th you are climbing with a group you cannot make any changes so if you are late you're late but anyway so that's a that's a whole different story but just make sure that you have your uh, covid19 results with you before you you get to the airport so um that's number one uh number two there is a health form um, that the Tanzanian go government require, requires 24 hours before you arrive in, in Tanzania. And so in that form, you will be basically just providing details about you and um, if you are experiencing any symptoms, um, it, where are you going to be staying, how many days you are staying in Tanzania. And also, as you fill that form, you will be asked to pay for a test. And it's $10. This is a mandatory test. Once you arrive in Tanzania, um, you will be asked to take a rapid test at the airport and there will be um, a check for your for your temperatures just to make sure that you are OK. And once you arrive to, to the airport, like I said, you show them the, the QR code for the payment that you submit online, $10. Um, so that QR code, they will basically test you and you depends on how busy the airport is, but you probably wait for about 10 to 15 minutes. And once the results are out and the results are good, then you should be good to go. So th these are the, the requirements or pandemic related uh, requirements to travel to Tanzania. Um, obviously, um, for a lot of nationals from, from all around the world, the government of Tanzania requires a visa. So um, even for US citizens, you do need a visa before you enter to Tanzania. And um, it's pretty straightforward, the application process. It's a visa upon arrival. So you don't really have to apply before traveling to Tanzania. And I know that uh, even for Moroccan citizens traveling to Tanzania, you do need um, a visa upon arrival. So there are two ways you can do this, right? You can either um, arrive to the airport when you go through the rapid test and health check and all of those, all of those stuff. You can... Um, go to the visa office and uh, you will be asked to provide them with the probably information about your return tickets and where you're staying what is the purpose of your visit and stuff like that or if you want to avoid going to the to the visa office in tanzania you can apply for an e-visa before you arrive in tanzania and i think this is this is the best way to go about it because um, when we arrived to the airport, it was so busy. The, the line was really, really long. Um, and we kind of just had to wait there for 
probably more than 45 minutes just waiting for the health check and stuff like that. So it's better to apply for your visa before you arrive in Tanzania. So the process is very easy and I do talk about it in, in one of the videos that I have up on my YouTube channel. So you pretty much just go to, to the website where you can start your application process. It's straightforward. They just ask you about your return ticket, which I'm assuming by this time you already have your return ticket. And then they will ask you for um, a copy of your passport, which you can take just using your phone and um, they will ask you for a photo of yourself for the visa. So you submit all of that information and then you have to pay for, for the visa application fee. Um, for American citizens, it's 100 US dollars. For Moroccan citizens, I think I heard someone a while back say that it was 50 US dollars, but I'm not very sure. But um, anyway, so you apply for, for the visa online and then when, within 24 to 48 hours, depends on um, which day you are applying, you will receive an email that basically says, hey, um, we got your information, your visa application um, is approved, uh, you're good to travel to Tanzania. And then they will send you a PDF document with all of the visa information. So you wanna make sure that you are saving that PDF document so that when you arrive to the airport, um, you are going to talk to the officers and then you gotta show them that PDF document to, to be able to enter Tanzania. They will take uh, fingerprints as well and ask you the same questions that you probably already answered during the visa application process and you're good to go. You are in Tanzania with no problems. So that's, I think that's pretty much it when it comes to, to the requirements to travel to Tanzania. And let me just grab a sip of water. Hello, everyone. Just for those of you who are um, just joining right now, we are talking about traveling in Tanzania 2021-2022. I'm talking about travel requirements during the pandemic. We'll talk about uh, traveling in Tanzania in general. We'll talk about Mount Kilimanjaro, safari in Tanzania, and also if you want to visit the beautiful island of Zanzibar. Okay, so we talked about passport, visa requirement, uh, pandemic-related requirements. Um, I want to touch a little bit on vaccines required to travel to Tanzania. So um, if you want to travel to Tanzania, we don't, you don't really need the, the COVID-19 vaccine that I covered earlier, uh, but it is a good idea to, to talk to your doctor before you travel to Tanzania. And uh, usually your travel doctor or just, you know, your, your normal physician will basically go to the website from the CDC and then they are going to give you recommendations about vaccines that you should have or you should think about before traveling to Tanzania. So a lot of people think that uh, the yellow fever vaccine is required for Tanzania, but that is not true. If you are traveling from the U.S., to Tanzania, you don't need the yellow fever vaccine. The only time you need yellow fever vaccine to enter Tanzania is if you are traveling from a country that's endemic for yellow fever. Like if you're traveling from Kenya to Tanzania, you'll probably, no, not probably, you 100% need a vaccine for, for the yellow fever and you need to have your vaccine card with you. Other than that, there aren't really any requirements for, for a to enter Tanzania as far as the rules and regulations go. But uh, when you talk to your doctor, they are probably going to ask you about Hep A and Hep B vaccines. And then they are going to ask you about the typhoid vaccine. And then they're going to probably talk about malaria as well. So none of them are required, but they're kind of important to have. So um, when I talked to, to, to my doctor, and I also had a consultation with the um, what are they called? Passport Health. Yeah. So Passport Health is uh, um, a company that you can go to depending on what destination you travel to. And then they will have a one on one with you to, to help you throughout the way and make sure that you understand what's required for your health. And they can even walk you through some requirements for visa. And it's, it's a very, you know, it's a very uh, helpful meeting that we had with Passport Health. But I really went to see them because I was curious about the service that they provide. But anyway, when you talk to your doctor, they it's, um, they're going to ask about Hep A, Hep B, and then the typhoid vaccine. Um, I ended up getting the typhoid vaccine before traveling to Tanzania only because um, if there is any, we're going to be eating food on the mountain and then water. I'm going to talk about that later on, but uh, 
just if there's any contaminated water or food, making sure that you have the, the typhoid vaccine is important. And then malaria pills. You will talk to your doctor about malaria pills. I don't want to give, give recommendations about uh, medical stuff because I'm, I'm, I'm just not qualified to do that. But for malaria pills, there, there are two types. There are malaria pills that you will take uh, daily and mal malaria pills that you will take weekly. So that's one thing that I ended up packing. And then the other thing that you would want to bring up to, to your doctor, uh, if you are climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, and if it's something that you are interested in, is the uh, Diamox to help you with altitude sickness. So a lot of people who are climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, they choose to, to be on Diamox medication, um, obviously if their health low it. And uh, it's something that you want to, to talk to your doctor about because you will need a prescription for Diamox and then you will need a prescription for malaria pills as well. So that's for health and vaccines for, for Tanzania. Now, uh, language in Tanzania. The, the, the language that's spoken in Tanzania is the Swahili language. It's the official language in Tanzania. Um, there are more than 100 tribes in Tanzania and every tribe has its own language, but the, the Swahili language is kind of bringing everyone together. Um, you don't really have to speak Swahili uh, if you are visiting Tanzania because depending on what activities you're going to be doing and uh, whether you're climbing the mountain or going on a safari, the majority of the time, your guide or the tour operator or the company that you're going to be traveling with, they already speak English and that's going to be good enough. But like I always say, when you're visiting a new country and you want to interact with the locals and you want to immerse yourself in unique experiences, I think it's a good idea to pick and learn some, uh, at least the essential phrases of, of, of that language. So one of the things that we did, Alex and I, before traveling to Tanzania, we, um, we used Duolingo, the free version, and then we would set daily challenges for us to, to learn a little bit and practice and at least know how to say hello, how to say thank you, how are you, because the, the locals really appreciate it when you show them that you are not only interested in their culture, but you are interested in the language as well, and you're putting some time and effort into, into learning their language. Um, so that's about the, the language. Uh, currency in Tanzania, it's the Tanzanian chillings. And when you get to the airport, there will be offices for currency exchange. Uh, now you will be probably sur surprised when you, when you um, convert your, your US dollars to chillings because um, one US dollars is more than 2000 uh, chillings, Tanzanian chillings. And that's going to be a lot of bills for you to count. Every time I, I do a transaction on money exchange, I like to count money on my own. But uh, with the Tanzanian chillings, it was a lot of bills. I was like, oh my God, I have to keep track of what I'm counting. But just keep that in mind. Um, I think it's a good idea. Don't wait until you leave the airport and find somewhere else for currency exchange. Try to have some bills with you at the currency exchange office at the airport. And then the other thing that you want to keep in mind um, try to have both large bills and then also small bills because you will be tipping people here and there if someone is helping you, taxi drivers if you want to, obviously. But make sure that you have not just the large bills because you will have a lot of 100,000 bills depending on how much you're converting, but make sure that you have 5,000, you have 2,000 Tanzanian chilling bills that you can hand every now and then. So that's currency in, uh, in Tanzania. Hello everybody, for those who are just joining right now, um, I'm talking about traveling in Tanzania, just uh, some general tips and things that you keep in mind before you travel to Tanzania. And I will be also answering any questions that uh, I receive right here. Okay, so what else about traveling to Tanzania? Um, obviously, water, yeah, I wanna talk about water um, and internet and some of the other rules in Tanzania. So water in Tanzania, a lot of people, even when you talk to your doctor, they would say that you should try to stay away from drinking tap water and drinking unfiltered water, just because even if, even though you will see the local drinking water, no problem, but um, probably your body is not um, accustomed to, to the bacteria in the water yet. So a lot of doctors recommend to, to stick to bottled water. And uh, when you're gonna be going on your safari, you will have access to filtered water. Uh, if you're climbing Mount Kilimanjaro, 
the porters are going to be filtering water for you. They will treat water before you drink it, which is great. And then if you're just exploring around Tanzania, just try to stick to uh, bottled water to, to avoid getting sick, especially if you have just a short period of time to spend in Tanzania, you don't really want to, to get sick and ruin your experience and plans. Um, the other thing for uh, the internet, yeah. So internet in Tanzania, uh, it's not going to be the most reliable internet. So keep that in mind. Uh, when we were on the mountain, we barely had any service. Whether you are using the roaming service with your provider or if you are using a local SIM card, the service on the mountain is not going to be great. And uh, um, usually people worry about how are you going to keep your family and loved ones updated about how you are doing on the mountain, right? Um, a lot of companies uh, do share updates to their Facebook page or Instagram page on a daily basis. Because if you're climbing the mountain, for example, you have eight days or seven days, even if it's five days, it's a long uh, period of time. And, you know, for me, for example, I wanted to make sure that my family, they know that I'm okay on the mountain. So these companies would share updates on a daily basis with a group photo, and then they would say, okay, team, um, I don't know, scavengers, whatever. You choose, You we chose a name for our team before we started climbing. And so every time they post something, they say, okay, team, uh, um, Mountain Holics. I don't even remember the name of our team. <laughs> what did we choose as a team? Anyway, so they will they will share some photos and say, okay, they made it to camp. Fine, day two, day three, they made it to the summit, and uh, that's good. That's enough information to to share with your family and loved ones. Um, but yeah, don't don't think that you're gonna have enough internet. There was a night or two where I used the the roaming service and. Uh, I was able to just see what's going on on Instagram. And for those of you who've been following for a long time, I was able to share some photos to stories one of those days. So that was pretty nice. Um, other than that, when you are staying in hotels and lodges, I remember when, when we, during the safari, because even with the safari, safari, we had uh, service some days and some days we didn't. But the good thing is the guy that we went on the safari for, he had a little uh, modem in his uh, vehicle that we could use as a hotspot and uh, um, have internet throughout the way. But uh, you know, it was spotty every now and then, but I would say it was better internet than, than when we were on the mountain. Um, some of the lodges and the hotels where we stayed, um, they had decent internet, but some of them it was it was not the best. Uh, when we stayed in Zanzibar, for example, the hotel where we stayed, um, there was a storm one of those nights and then the internet cut off. So if the weather is bad, the internet might not be reliable. Sometimes there is an access point, you will see that there is a Wi-Fi uh, that you can connect to, but there's just no internet. So um, I, I would say that the internet was not really uh, reliable in Tanzania. So, so that's something to, to pay attention to. What else? Yes, yeah, so um, budget for traveling in Tanzania. This is a, a question that I've been receiving a lot. How much should I budget for if I'm going to Tanzania? And uh, it was a difficult question to answer just because the, the budget will vary based on what activities you are interested in doing and how much time you are spending in Tanzania. So, but I put a video out there on my YouTube channel. I'm going to, to leave a link to it in, in the comment, but if you go to, to our YouTube channel, Trekking Pals, and then you basically just search for um, budget to travel in Africa or budget to climb Mount Kilimanjaro, you will find this full video. And I have the breakdown of the budget for Kilimanjaro, I have the budget for safari and a budget for one week in Tanzania. So that should be um, enough information for you. Now, um, I wanna briefly talk about some of the places or some of the best places that you want to see when, when you are in Tanzania. I mean, it's a very um, large country. There are a lot of national parks. There are a lot of beautiful places that are worth seeing and so many unique experiences that you can um, engage in. But uh, uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about what we did and I'm gonna talk about some of the places that you can add to, to your list. So obviously Mount Kilimanjaro um, is the highest peak in, uh, in Africa. 
and uh, it's one of the seven summits and it drives a lot of uh, tourism activity to the area and if you are into hiking and trekking and adventure traveling like we are you probably want to consider climbing mount kilimanjaro so for mount kilimanjaro um there are a lot of a lot of routes that you can choose from to to get to the top if that's your plan but regardless of climbing mount kilimanjaro just the national park kilimanjaro national park is a beautiful national park that you should visit whether you are climbing or not but if you are climbing there are many routes there are some routes that only take five days and then there are some routes that would take eight days and more it really depends on what uh, you are interested in but uh, do the way it works is the more time you are spending on the mountain the higher chances of success because you are allowing yourself to acclimatize to the change in the altitude so usually um you'd hear people going for five days on mount kilimanjaro that is not enough time for your body to adjust to the change in the in the altitude um the route that we chose because this is a question that i received is the machami route and we went on seven days up the mountain so seven days is a very good amount of time to to let yourself acclimatize and adjust because the higher you go up in altitude and the peak of mount kilimanjaro is about nineteen thousand three hundred forty one feet so it's pretty high up there and if you don't um, have experience hiking at altitude and even if you have experience hiking at altitude it's a lot of elevation gain from from where you start and you want to give your body some time to adjust and process um yeah so the machami route uh, took us seven days um to get up and down and i feel like it was a good amount of time uh, the machami route people would uh, would would argue that it's probably the most scenic route and the most popular as well and uh, you will notice if you choose to do the machami route there will be a lot of people on the trail but because we hiked, I would say during the pandemic, it wasn't as busy. It can get a lot busier because uh, A, the Machami route has a higher success rate. And then also because it's very scenic, because you go through these different climate zones, you go through the, the forest and then you are in the Alpine desert area. And it's, it's really beautiful. So I highly recommend the Machami routes. Um, there are other routes. I'm not going to, to talk about routes in the details. I do have a live stream where I shared more details about each and every route. And I will have them um, listed on, on the article that just went live on, on the website. So you can take a look at the Umbuya route, Marango. Um, there's the Northern Circuit. There are many routes. It depends on what you are looking for. But uh, I highly recommend the Machami route just because that's the route that we, we, we chose. And we had a very pleasant experience. So um, the other thing about climbing Mount Kilimanjaro that's going to be important is choosing what tour operator you're going to be climbing with uh, because it you can't climb Mount Kilimanjaro on your own. Uh, it's uh, it's illegal. You have to have a guide with you or a tour operator. And uh, this tour operator, this company is going to handle all of the permits that you will need. They will uh, supply you on the mountain. There will be porters who are going to be carrying your camping gear, tents and provisions on the mountain because it will be difficult if it's something that you, you attempt to do by yourself. It's, it's a lot of gear and it's not even possible to do it by yourself, but I'm just saying by way of having porters helping you on the mountain and then guides and assistant guides, the, the national park is trying to set climbers for success to get to the top of the mountain. So choosing a tour operator when you're going to be uh, planning for Mount Kilimanjaro is going to be, um, you know, a big decision. It's going to take time to, to do some research and make sure that you are choosing the right company because there are so many options out there. It's, it's pretty overwhelming. So I would say um, ask around, shop around, but also you have to know what's your budget. How much money are you willing to spend? Because like I talked about in my previous video, the budget can, to climb Mount Kilimanjaro can range from 2,000 US dollars to 6,000 US dollars, and sometimes even more, depending on what outfitter you are going for. And um, there are usually companies that are uh, local to Tanzania, they operate in Tanzania, and then there are Western companies like um, uh, Can Do Adventures, REI, uh, Kili Warriors, these big name companies are usually more expensive. They do provide a great service, but um, they are the better the service, I feel like sometimes the better the service, the higher the cost. 
Um, but yeah, so you have to decide what is going to be your budget to climb Mount Kilimanjaro. And then once you have that, you start shopping around, read reviews, hear from people who climb with a certain company and then make uh, your decision accordingly. So that's for Mount Kilimanjaro. I know that some of you guys have a lot of questions about climbing Kili and then what you are supposed to be packing on the mountain, which, uh, um, by the way, the, the company, the majority of companies will provide you with a detailed list of the gear that you will need on the mountain. Some of it you will have to bring. Um, you probably have to purchase it before uh, you climb the mountain or even before you travel to Tanzania. And some of the gear they will rent uh, for you. Like for us, um, the porters are carrying the tents and and then we had to rent the sleeping bag from from the company but other than that all of the gear was, was was ours even the trekking poles we decided to to bring our trekking poles our jackets our gloves mittens so uh, the only thing that we rented from them was uh, was the sleeping bag and it's pretty much the same for for everyone I, some people decide to bring their own sleeping bag but i think it's better to let the the company handle it especially if it's a good company because they will make sure that it's rated for the harsh Temper, the harsh temperature on the mountain. So um, that's why we decided to rent the, the sleeping bag. Um, other than that, I do have a list uh, on kit.co, kit.co slash trekking pals, where I uh, keep track of all of the gear that we packed. So it's a, a live list, which means I go every now and then and try to add some items. But the, the important items when it comes to uh, what backpack we, we carried on the mountain, the water bladder, and then some some pieces of our clothing that were really that worked really well for us on the mountain. You will be able to find them there, and they will be listed on the website as well. Um, so that is for climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Um, what else? Yeah, I think um, I'm going to move on from Mount Kilimanjaro. I think uh, and I will be making a video in which I will talk in details about uh, things that you should keep in mind and maybe some tips to help you increase your chances of climbing the mountain. Obviously, training is pretty important to, to increase your chances of having a successful summit on the mountain. You really want to spend a, a good amount of time and have a solid plan to train before climbing uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. Uh, the reason being, I know a lot of people don't, there are people who don't really train for the mountain beforehand. Uh, but the problem with that is even if you're fit and you go to the gym, uh, you don't want to be miserable on the mountain. You want to be climbing the mountain comfortably, at least for the first, let's say three, four days before summit day, because summit day is going to be hard for everyone, whether you train or whether you didn't train. If you didn't train, it's, it's going to be probably very, very difficult, but it's important to train for the mountain. And um, I do have a live stream also about how we train for the mountain. I think for, for those of you guys who've been following us for quite some time, we started we started training for the mountain about three um, three months before our climb. And that was, it wasn't a super extensive training, but our goal was to make sure that we are uh, going on a, on a high elevation hike or long hike every weekend, I would say. So every weekend we would go on a long hike. And then throughout the week, I would say we would go work out and train uh, three times a week on an average. That would be either uh, walking for an extended amount of time on the treadmill with an incline or sometimes going on the Stairmaster, just just trying to diversify our training, focusing on strength, focusing on, on cardio and stuff like that. So that is for training um, on Mount Kilimanjaro. And then the other thing that I wanted to talk about is a safari in Tanzania. So a visit in Tanzania requires going on a safari. It's just a wonderful place to go uh, for a safari. There are many types of safaris that you can choose from, like I said, depending on how much time you have to spend. Uh, but uh, the number of national parks in Tanzania are just so beautiful. So um, on an average, if you're going on Tanzania, say for two weeks or three weeks, a lot of people would go for four or five days for, for their safari. And some of the popular attractions I'm going to talk about right now is the Serengeti National Park. So Serengeti National Park is a very popular destination if you are going on a safari. And then the way it usually works when you pick a safari, whether you are going for a group safari or a private safari, you can work with the company to understand what their itinerary will look like. Usually, if you are going with a group, there will be a set itinerary with specific national parks and places that you are going to see. 
but if you are going for a private safari you there will be some a certain level of flexibility where you can say these are the places that i'm interested in this is the amount of time that i want to spend in every national park these are the experiences that i'm interested in but usually people would go to the serengeti national park i mean if you're going on a safari and you're not going for the serengeti national park that's 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 a sin you have to go to the serengeti national park um there are two main or popular regions of the Serengeti National Park. So Serengeti National Park is where you will be seeing a lot of beautiful wildlife. There is the North Serengeti. So North Serengeti is usually popular for the wildebeest migration when it's, uh, when it's the right season. So a lot of people would um, fly from either Arusha or Moshi and then get to the North Serengeti and hop on a jeep and then you will start just cruising around and seeing all of the wildebeest migration. So a lot of wildebeest will gather, herds of wildebeest will gather together and then try to do the water crossing. And it's, it's a wonderful thing to see. I mean, we before going on this safari, we would only see it on documentaries and then marvel at the, the beauty of the crossings and the beauty of the wildebeest getting together. But that that's a unique experience in in the North Serengeti but usually if you have four or five days you'll probably be skipping the North Serengeti and you would instead go to the Central Serengeti so Central Serengeti is is a perfect spot if you want to see big cats like um, lions leopards cheetahs you will be able to see um, if there are any you know um, uh, if there's any river you will be able to see hippos and crocodiles it's so very wonderful. Even if you get to spend one or two days in the Serengeti National Park, it's just amazing. Central Serengeti is just amazing. Um, there are so so that's the Central Serengeti. Um, Ngorongoro Conservation Area is also a popular um, destination if you're going on a short safari. So Ngorongoro is is a conservation area, not a national park. And um, it's a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, you will be able to see a lot of wildlife in there as well. There are um, hippos, there are rhinos. Usually you will be able, when you go to the Ngorongoro Conservation Area, that is the place where you, your chances are the highest to see, to see rhinos, which we were not able to see on our safari, but you will be able to see some gazelles, zebras, buffaloes you name it it's just it's just incredible and then with Ngorongoro crater um the majority of people would add a stop to Lake Maniara National Park we didn't get to go see Lake Maniara National Park but uh, Lake Maniara is usually for people who love bird watching um the the lake has a lot of uh, flamingos and uh, they have a lot of butterflies a lot of um uh, birds and it, it's really wonderful i don't think people spend more than one day in lake maniara so uh, a typical safari would include central serengeti ngorongoro crater and then lake maniara and you can add to that if, if possible the other national park that we went to was Ng uh, tarangire national park and i loved being in tarangire because there were so many elephants in tarangire national park alongside with other animals but i just felt like tarangire had the the highest number of of elephants and you don't have to go to it doesn't matter whether you are going in the rainy season or the dry season you will be able to see elephants in uh, Tarangire National Park um, so that is for for the safari um, usually the way it works uh, with the, with these uh, safaris on a typical safari you are going to be in um, a vehicle with your guide and then the guide is going to be also your driver and the the majority of these uh, vehicles they will have um, a roof that can be open so you can stand uh, you have to remove your shoes if you're going to be standing on the sea so you get to stand and you get to see the wildlife around there are some areas i think in ngorongoro conservation area just driving there you are not allowed to to leave the uh, the vehicle open you pretty much have to close the vehicle but the majority of the time uh, you will be able to to stand up and then see around and it's a wonderful experience you don't have you you're not allowed to walk outside on these um safaris like vehicle safaris you only walk outside of the vehicle if there if the guide decides that you're going to be having lunch outside if it's safe to do so and if you have to use the the restroom which is basically just going behind the vehicle and going about doing your business and then you get back to the car but you're not allowed to to hike or take walks in these national parks that i mentioned it's just not safe you don't know what animal can just jump and show up uh, but there are other type of safaris like um, walking safaris where you pretty much go with a uh, uh, park ranger who's going to have uh, uh, a gun and 
who will be there and who is knowledgeable enough to keep you safe should anything go wrong. But that's a different type of safari. I, I learned after this trip to Tanzania that there isn't just one type of vehicle safari. There are so many types of safaris, walking safaris, hunting safaris. Uh, there are safaris with the fully open vehicles where, you know, it's, it's, it's fully open and you're just driving around beautiful national parks of, of the Serengeti. It's just um, incredible. So that is for the safari. I will have a detailed list of things that you want to pack uh, for your safari. Uh, but maybe I'll talk a little bit about accommodation. Um, if you are going on a group safari, there are options where you can sleep in tents outside in the wilderness. And that usually makes the cost of your safari cheaper. But in all of these national parks that I talked about or outside of these national parks, there are also hotels and lodges and bush camps and the prices are are different based on you know how luxurious they are but we the majority of the time we stayed in bush camps and the way it works with the bush camp you are sleeping in a tent but it's more glamping than camping so in your tent uh, you will have um, a comfortable bed and you will even have a shower, but it is a tent. So uh, there isn't a big protection. There isn't much protecting you from the animals outside. So there was the first night that we spent in uh, the North Serengeti. We woke up hearing lions roaring right outside of the tent. And then uh, one of the nights, I think it was in Ngorongoro conservation area or outside of Ngorongoro conservation area, we woke up to hyenas right outside of our tents, which was, which was just incredible. I was not really scared because I knew it was safe. And uh, usually every bush camp has a set of rules where they would tell you, um, you cannot walk outside of your tent at night you have to call someone to, to escort you to, to get to, to the dining area, for example. So they provide you with, with a set, uh, with a set uh, of rules. Uh, thanks guys for watching. So they provide you with a set of rules and you wanna make sure that you are following them. Uh, but yeah, one of the nights I woke up, listen, uh, there was literally a hyena outside of the bush camp and it was just incredible. And then one of those nights I woke up, that was in one of the more developed um, bush camps, I woke up to an elephant right outside of the room. And I took a video of the elephant just walking in the middle of the night. It was, it was just so surreal. You guys, I cannot wait to share all of these videos with you. Hey guys, I see that we have a lot of people who just joined us. If you're just joining right now, I'm talking about traveling in the beautiful country of Tanzania. I was talking about some tips to travel in Tanzania, things that you want to keep in mind, climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. And right now I'm talking about safari, going for a safari in Tanzania. So, um, yeah, so uh, it's just, it, it, going, going on a safari is just an incredible experience. So that's for, for some of the accommodation. And I will be sharing more videos about this. Uh, but as far as packing and things that you're, how to dress for a safari in Tanzania, like I said, the majority of the time you are going to be uh, in the vehicle. So um, you want to make sure that you are in comfortable clothing. And usually there are a set of colors that you want to, to stay away from, like dark colors, like black or blue, because these are the colors that attract the, the tsetse fly. And although we heard from our guide and a lot of other people that there aren't really any you know, there are no problems with uh, with having, there are no tsetse flies anymore, probably in the majority of those areas, but you do want to make sure that you're not attracting those flies. You will even notice if you go on this safari that there are some um, traps, like just a piece of clo clo cloth, that's just, <laughs> just a piece of cloth that's blue, usually blue and black to attract the, the tsetse flies. So you don't want to wear the, those colors. You want to to stick to probably uh, khaki colors and green just to, to avoid any problems with the tsetse fly. Uh, with the sun, uh, you want to make sure that you're applying enough sunscreen, you have a comfortable hat. And because you're going to be standing and watching from the top of the car, make sure that it's a hat that is not going to fly off of your head uh, uh, easily. So. Usually with the hat that I had, I made sure that, you know, it's just sitting there. It's not going to fly with the, with the wind. And you want to make sure that you're applying sunscreen. It gets pretty warm and pretty hot. So long sleeve, long pants is the best way to, to avoid sunburns. And um, 
yeah, I'm going to put a, a packing list on my kids.co slash trekking pal site and I will add in all of the uh, uh, all of the gear that we packed for uh, Mount Kilimanjaro. We did also pack um, some anti-repellent, insect repellent creams. Uh, some of them are creams that you can apply to your skin or even your, you know, your face if you want to. And then some of them are sprays that you can spray around the vehicle if your guide allow it. But I don't think there will be any problem with that. So that is for safari in, in the beautiful country of Tanzania. Okay, now I want to talk about uh, Zanzibar. Zanzibar is a wonderful destination if you want to just go lay by the beach and then relax and that was much much needed after climbing the mountain and after the safari because even the safari although you're going to be staying in the vehicle every single day it's still exhausting because the sun and you know just being taking pictures all the time and it's not going to be the most comfortable ride because you are in the middle of nowhere and the roads are not maintained the, whether it's the Serengeti or um, Lake Manyara any national park you're going to the roads are going to be not the best um, I remember one of the days on uh, on the safari uh, we were really the vehicle was really having a hard time just crossing crossing the river and I, I thought that it's going to go wrong but we had a wonderful guide and he did a good job of just getting us safe uh, from there but it, it was a very scary moment I caught that on on the GoPro so I would see that the vehicle is not moving the tire was probably stuck and then I would turn and I see the, the body of a wildebeest dead in the river. And then I turn to the other side and there's this huge crocodile. It's just so close by. So uh, all I can think about is like, oh my God, if this car gets stuck in here, there's a freaking crocodile outside of the vehicle. It was just a scary moment for me. But anyway, so after all of that, going to Zanzibar was, was, was really um, a beautiful thing to, to just relax and unwind. Uh, from mainland, because uh, Zanzibar is, is an island off of the, off of the mainland or off of the coast, uh, we had to, um, do we have to take a ferry? No, we flew to Zanzibar. We flew to Zanzibar from, from Arusha. And uh, there are a lot of things to do in Zanzibar, but uh, some of the some of the best uh, experiences we had was uh, renting a scooter and then just driving around the island, not going with the guide and just exploring on our own. Um, some of the popular activities to do is obviously snorkeling and scuba diving. Um, you can also go on spice tours because Zanzibar was known for being the uh, um, it was called the Spice Island. They had a lot of uh, uh, spices like cloves and cinnamon. And you can go on these tours where they would basically take you to um, some spice farms and you get to learn about the spices that are native to the area. Um, Stone Town. Stone Town is a beautiful uh, place to visit as well. And from Stone Town, one of my favorite experiences was going to Prison Island. So you get to take a boat and cross from Stone Town to uh, Prison Island. This is the, uh, the African or the Tanzanian version of um, Alcatraz Island. So there used to be a lot of slaves trading activity that happened in Prison Island. And it's very, very rich in history. So we took a tour up there. It was for probably four, five, six hours. I would say six hours it took the majority of the day where we saw Stone Town, learned about the history of the Stone Town. We learned about the uh, Arabic influence on the island of Zanzibar. And then we got to, to go to Prison Island as well. So that was one of my um, favorite memories of being in Zanzibar overall. Um, yeah, so this is all I wanted to cover for today. I just wanted to give you guys bits and pieces uh, as well. Uh, big turtles too. Yes. They do have huge turtles from uh, um, the seashells. They transported these turtles from seashells a long while back. And then some of them are 100 years old. And you get to pet the, the turtles on, on the islands as well. So a lot of great things to, to see in Tanzania. These are just some of the places that we visited. Um, obviously, Lake Victoria, if uh, if you do have time or if you have more time to spend in Tanzania, it's worth going to, to Lake Victoria and exploring the area. 
Uh, we also loved going to, to Lake Yasi. It is not a very popular destination. You won't hear a lot of people talking about it, but Lake Yasi is right outside of the Serengeti National Park and it's home to some uh, unique tribes. We get to, to meet with the Hadzabi tribes. Uh, it's, uh, it's a tribe who still lives uh, off of hunting and you know just that that's what they live off of they they hunt for baboons and gazelles and uh, many more animals in the area and it was really wonderful experience to meet with them so because when, when you are going on a safari and if you have the time you get to choose what tribes you can go and spend time with um, the most popular one is the Maasai tribe uh, you get to go hang out with the Maasai tribe and learn about their ways of living but that's that's not the only tribe in Tanzania there's the, the the Toga, the, the Hadzabi tribes, and many more, uh, more than 100 tribes in the country. And really getting to, to, to experience and watch their way of living is, is just an incredible experience. Okay, so we have been going for a long time. Um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this live stream. Like I said, I don't do a lot of live stream on Instagram, but I just wanted the information to be right here for you guys. And I will link to, to the article that is now live on the chat on, on the website, trekkingpals.com. And it's a full guide of traveling in Tanzania, as well as the videos that we have on YouTube. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you guys being here. And I am going to wrap up for the day. And I will talk to you eventually at some point. Bye, guys.